Apple just announced Vision Pro, a life and perhaps world-changing piece of technology that might just be the most important invention since the cell phone. Let's dive in head first, or should we say eye first, and talk about what Apple Vision Pro really is who it's for, and why I personally think it's going to fail. Vision Pro is Apple's new spatial computer. Instead of interacting with computers outside us, spatial computers let you step inside the computer itself. In some ways, Vision Pro is similar to the MetaQuest and other VR headsets, but Vision Pro is so advanced, it's hard to put it in the same category. It's made of advanced, lightweight materials like aluminum and glass. It has a knitted single-piece headband with cushioning, breathability, and stretch. Its light seal is made of soft fabric and comes in different shapes and sizes. In fact, it needs to be custom fit to your face. Flexible straps keep its audio pods close to your ears and trick your brain into thinking you're truly immersed in sound. We'll dive deeper into audio in just a minute, but first, let's talk about Vision OS. Vision OS is the world's first spatial operating system. It's built to support the low latency requirements of spatial computing, offering a truly immersive experience and to minimize motion sickness. I remember using Google Earth and the Oculus Rift, I really did start to feel motion sickness. With Vision OS, Apple has created a three-dimensional interface that brings digital content to life, making it feel present in your physical world. The interface dynamically responds to natural light and even casts shadows, enhancing your understanding of scale and distance. But what sets Vision OS apart is the way you interact with it. Apple has designed a new way to interact with spatial content using your hands, eyes, and voice. Just imagine browsing through apps just by looking at them or tapping your fingers together to make a selection. To scroll through content, you can flick your wrist or you can use your voice for dictation. Vision OS also introduces EyeSight, which lets other people know what you're focused on. If you're wearing Vision Pro and someone walks up to you, the device feels transparent and lets them see your eyes. This has never been done before on a VR headset. In their presentation, Apple made it look like the device is transparent, but it isn't. There are actually three displays, two on the inside, and one on the outside. Vision Pro is powered by Apple Silicon in a unique two-chip design. It takes a lot of power to run this device, so they used the M2 chip, which we've already seen in Max and the iPad Pro, as its primary processor. But it doesn't stop there. The Apple Vision Pro also features the R1 chip, which is responsible for processing input from a huge array of sensors. Vision Pro has 12 cameras, five sensors, and six microphones that capture and interpret your surroundings in real time and provide a truly immersive experience. One of the standout features of the Apple Vision Pro is its advanced eye tracking system. It's equipped with high-speed cameras and a ring of LEDs that shine invisible light on your eye that make interactions feel natural and effortless. Apple Vision Pro also offers an advanced spatial audio system, utilizing individually amplified drivers in what they're calling audio pods. This means that the audio experience is totally personalized, adapting to your own head and ear geometry. In their presentation, Apple said the Vision Pro was virtually silent. That's not silent. So imagine you're watching a movie like A Quiet Place where sound or the lack thereof is really important and you just hear this whirring going on all the time. I'm a little bit concerned about that. Let's talk about battery life. According to Apple, you do get all day use when it's plugged in but that's been true for pretty much every tech product ever created. Or you can get up to two hours of battery life with the external battery pack that fits in your pocket. Now, what if I don't have pockets? This is a serious problem in women's fashion. They need pockets too, what's gonna happen? There's one spec we haven't talked about yet, weight. Come to think of it, Apple didn't talk about it either. Several people who got to try Vision Pro out raised concerns about the weight. To Apple's credit, the reason they made an external battery pack that fits in your pocket is to cut down on weight. Ultimately, this is a computer you're wearing on your head. It's going to be heavy, and it might not be comfortable for hours on end. We tried out the AirPods Max. We thought those were heavy. The Vision Pro is definitely heavier. And as comfortable as Apple claims their products always are, the AirPods Max were not very comfortable. One of the most impressive aspects of the Vision Pro is its display. The Apple Vision Pro boasts an ultra high resolution display system using micro OLED technology with a staggering 23 million pixels spread across two displays, 
each about the size of a postage stamp. You can expect stunning visuals. For comparison, your 4K TV at home has about 8.3 million pixels, which means with Vision Pro, each eye gets a display sharper than that. Vision Pro has a wide color range and HDR for a totally immersive viewing experience. And with custom lenses, the sharpness and clarity are truly remarkable. For those of you who wear glasses, Apple has partnered with Zeiss to offer optical inserts to ensure visual fidelity and eye tracking accuracy. How much do those cost, David? We don't know. I bet they're very expensive. Did you notice how no one in Apple's marketing videos were wearing glasses? I don't think those optical inserts are going to be very cheap. The sticker price is $3,499. After tax, it'll be hundreds of dollars more. And after all those accessories, this is gonna be a very expensive product. I think it's gonna be about four grand all in. Apple even teased a different kind of band. During the event, that's not going to be free. I really wanna know how much the Hermes Apple Vision Pro headband is going to cost. It's going to be ridiculous. Before they revealed the price, Apple said this. If you purchased a new state-of-the-art TV, surround sound system, powerful computer with multiple high-definition displays, high-end camera, and more, you still would not have come close to what Vision Pro delivers. Which is true, but your whole family can watch the TV. That being said, a $3,500 sticker price isn't unheard of for the first generation of an entirely new kind of Apple product. The first Macintosh, which Apple released in 1985, cost $2,495. In today's dollars, that's about $7,000. Or two Apple Vision Pros. But none of this matters unless it changes the way we use our technology, and Apple is pretty stoked on it. Apple is saying Vision Pro is for everybody. At home, environments take your experience beyond the physical room. Dynamic landscapes can help you focus or reduce clutter, creating the perfect ambiance for any situation. See you later, vacuum cleaner. Imagine you want courtside seats at the Lakers. You want to sit right next to Jack Nicholson. With Apple Vision Pro, everyone gets the best seat in the house. Engineering firms can work on new designs without actually building them. Surgeons can practice operating without cutting somebody open. Or you can do whatever the heck this is with a car or be a DJ with what is by far the worst example in the entire presentation. Apple Vision Pro transforms any space into your own personal movie theater, as long as that movie is less than two hours long. Or to be fair, you can plug in the headset through the battery pack for all day usage. Gamers can take on the role of the main character and be a part of the action. And with Disney Plus launching on day one, Star Wars fans can transport themselves to a galaxy far, far away. And for you writers out there who don't want to pinch to type, it works with the Magic Keyboard and Magic Trackpad too. One of the biggest surprises for me was that Apple introduced a 3D camera. Out of nowhere. It allows you to capture, relive, and immerse yourself in your favorite memories. With brilliant color and spectacular detail, every photo and video takes on a new life, transporting you back to those special moments, just like episode three of Black Mirror. Wait, does this mean we're getting a 3D camera on iPhone? iPhone Ultra, it's coming one day. It's not that far away. Probably not this year though. I don't think so, no. 3D cameras sound great until more than one person is wearing the headset and then what the heck happens? I think we might see a new cottage industry rather than hiring a photographer for your wedding, for example. You hire somebody with their Apple Vision Pro, they show up and take all these pictures for you. And let's not forget about security. EyeSight, features optic ID, which is kind of like face ID for your iris. Apple also processes camera and sensor data directly on your device so your apps don't have access to your surroundings. Asterisk, unless it's necessary for spatial experiences. And listen up all you peeping Toms out there, so excited to get your hands on the Apple Vision Pro. Too bad because it has visual indicators to let you and the people around you know when you're being recorded. Apple says Vision Pro will be released early next year, but we think that's a bit optimistic. I can see this product getting delayed by production issues, and if it gets delayed too long, the M2 chip that it's going to ship with will already be out of date. Which brings us to the $3,500 question, should you buy it? I don't think so with one big exception. I'll talk about that in just a second. But I see this product as a necessary first step 
towards a more user-friendly, less ridiculous looking, less expensive, Apple AR VR product. I just don't think this product in a vacuum is worth buying. One of the examples they demoed was mindfulness. Do I really need to pay $3,500 and pop on my headset for a one minute meditation? Sounds like TM to me. Now here is my big exception. I think this product sealed up in 20 to 25 years is gonna be worth so much money like a collector's item. If you can take that $3,500 hit, I expect this to be worth a lot more in 20 to 25 years. But don't quote us on that. Don't quote us, that is not investment <laughs> advice. Yeah, this is, <laughs> we do not- Put your it. money in a Roth IRA. and like, You'll be in much better shape. Yeah, probably. Yes. To be entirely honest, I think this product is absolutely amazing and I will be buying one. But to be fair, there will be a second generation and a third generation. And if you can wait a few years, it's going to cost a lot less. I really think you should wait those few years. Do you want to see another really expensive, really ridiculous product? Check out our review of the Dyson Zone headphones, which we could have used you know, now that like it's Mars outside. Yeah, it is Mars outside here in upstate New York. Yeah. But to compare the Dyson Zone headphones to this product, is absolutely ridiculous. To find out why, watch our next video. I don't know <clears throat> a quiet play. I know you want. Zach, Zach, did you watch it? No. Yeah, Are you we don't like watch it. it. Oh, Nobody that's such it. a big movie. Are you kidding no. me? No. Oh, We're not going you're missing. You're missing out. You scroll through content. You flick your wrist, or you just dictate, or you can use your voice. Oh, wow.